All right, so today I thought we would talk about some of the synthetic processes used for uh, ma manufacturing synthetic gemstones. There's a lot, and I'm only going to cover a few of them. So I'm going to start with this ruby bool right here. This is a ruby bool. Uh, the method for producing this was uh, uh, first described and first uh, done by Augustus Vernel. I don't know if I'm saying his, wrong, his name wrong or right. Uh, I, I apologize to him if I'm not. But uh, it looks like it should have formed like this, and that's not how it, it was grown. It was grown in a lab where they had um, powdered pure aluminum oxide, very, very finely powdered and very, very, very pure. And it was powdered and it dripped down through a little nozzle onto a turntable that spun. And that, that turntable in there was in a chamber that was heated up to about 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit or just over 2,000 degrees Celsius. And uh, it was grown using this little clear seed crystal here. So this is a seed crystal of, of corundum. And it was grown like this. And that turntable would turn slightly, uh, slowly, as that powder dripped down through the flame. And as it dripped down through the flame, it would melt and then recrystallize into this. So they, they grow these great big crystals, just like the, this, this one. We call them crystals even though they're man-made. Uh, in the chemistry department, they don't care if it's a crystal, if it's natural or man-made. They just call that uh, a crystal. So mineralogists would say, no, it's a pseudo-crystal or a man-made crystal. It's, it's, it's not a real crystal. So anyway, um, they grow them really big, use them for the faces on watches. Uh, another big use for them is that if, when you go to their, the checkout at their grocery store, you'll see that they have the laser, laser scanners in there. Those, those clear plates that the lasers are shining through are made out of synthetic corundum because they're real, it's really hard. The only thing harder than that is a diamond, so it's not very easy to scratch. So you, everybody just thinks those are just glass, but they're not. They're really corundum. And uh, I, I've been trying to find a cash register that's been going out of business or something that I can steal one of those from, and I can't seem to find one. So if you come across one, let me know. Um, so they use the same method for growing not just corundum, but other, other uh, minerals as well. These are spinel. These are grown just strictly for the gym industry. Uh, spinel, this is a sapphire spinel, sapphire color, but the mineral, mineralogy of a spinel, uh, or chemistry of a spinel. Same with these two. You can see that they're green and blue. Uh, one's aquamarine. And this one's a heliodor spinel. So grown in the same process where they, they spin. This one is, is not very round, which was one of the things I liked about it is that uh, it's kind of weird. This process is one way of growing these crystals. Another way is in a flux method, and that's where they take the, uh, the elements, the, the, the chemical compounds of a mineral, and put it in a crucible with some kind of flux, and then they melt it down and let it recrystallize. And that re the melting down, the recrystallization can take uh, sometimes months and months to, to grow and develop. And when you get that, you get these kinds of crystals. So these are, are shards of the, the mineral that's coming out of there, and these are cubic zirconia. So, all right, so these ones are grown in a lab using the flux method, and they are cubic zirconia. And you can always tell it because it's really, really heavy compared to the spinel ones. And uh, you can see it comes in a different colors. And so these were all jumbled together, all the same color ones, jumbled together in, in, a, in a crucible with this, this clayish looking um, flux and when they break it open these are what's crystallized inside. Now the, when they grow them um, in, in a crucible that all, all the ones that come out of the same crucible are the same color. So these ones are all ones from different color, uh, different batches. Now you get the blue. Clear, very common in gemstones. It's often used as a synthetic for diamonds and then kind of an amber colored one. Those are kind of fun. And uh, these are synthetic quartz crystals grown in water, uh, uh, an aqueous solution. They're grown in what's called an autoclave, and they have these, in, in these wires, and you can see them in here. There's wires there, and uh, they come out the bottom here, and they go through there, and they run an electrical current through the solution that makes the, uh, the quartz uh, crystallize to those wires. And they get these really big, funky crystals, and they grow them... Uh, in long uh, chains of them. And so they can get like 10 or 15 of these growing inside one vat uh, or hundreds of these growing inside one vat. And again, these have the little crystal, the little wires on the ends that they grow through. Here's where one grew connected to this one. So it's kind of weird. So um, anyway, those are fun. Again, grown in water, uh, an aqueous solution, hydro, uh, hydro, uh, hydro solution. This is fused quartz. This is where they take very, very pure quartz crystals, very fine mineral specimens, grind them into a fine powder, and use them for, uh, they, well, this is a test rod. The, the, this was made for windows for the space shuttle. 
So this is a test rod for one that was made for that, uh, again, fused quartz. These other quartzes are, when you buy a quartz watch, they're the timing mechanism in it because it vibrates at a very specific frequency for a very, very long time. And that's why quartz watches are so accurate. So this is just a fluke of nature. This is uh, from uh, an assay office here, the Centennial Eureka Mine here in Utah. And when they would uh, smelter the ore to, to do the assaying, these green balls and, and, and puddles would end up in the bottom of the crucible. So this quartz and this quartz, they look very much the same. Uh, one of them is synthetic. So this one was grown in a lab in Ohio. A dead giveaway that it's lab grown is the fact that it has a very flat surface on the back. So this one is called Jack Straw Quartz. It's from Arkansas. And even though it's kind of flat on the back, you can see that it's not planed completely flat. All right, so here, just a little quick comparison here is the synthetic versus the faceted gemstone. So there is a piece off of that one that's been faceted. Let's get the right side show. So you can see the colors are the same. It's a very popular material because it's very inexpensive and it's very colorful. All right, so now, dad joke of the day. Uh, I spent $1,500 for my daughter's prom to buy, to rent a, a limo. All that money, and it didn't even come with a driver. I had spent $1,500 and had nothing to chauffeur it. <laughs>